Snapchat is all about relationships. And so when we've thought about supporting our partners in sports, it's really about, you know, fandom is something that is always shared. It's shared with friends and shared with family. And technology can make sharing that fandom easier and a lot more fun. With Snapchat, that happens through the camera because right. people use snaps uh, to share and express themselves visually with their friends and family. So in the very early days, what we realized was that the vast majority of sports fans never had the opportunity to actually go to a game. And we could bring that experience of being in the stadium home to folks who are watching on Snapchat by stitching together all the snaps that people were taking in the stadium into one story and sharing that with our community. As we evolve the service, uh, this is a, a Yeah, great, we, got some, we got some stuff up here right now. <laughs> some good examples. Um, as we evolve the service, we really realized the role that augmented reality could play. And today, we're helping tons of stadiums uh, right. all over the world bring AR to their uh, kiss right. cam and, and really elevate the fan experience. But what, what do you think the difference is for somebody who says, I'm going to build my following? on Snap versus I'm gonna go build my following on TikTok. I mean, you might not really need a following per se, you could, the algorithm might do it for you, versus I'm gonna really build my following on, and I'm gonna put a lot of my energy into Insta. What we hear from creators and Snap stars is that they really value the relationship they form with their audience on Snapchat, that that engagement from their audience is really unique. So with stories, for example, people have private story replies so that right. they can engage directly with their fans. Sometimes they take those replies and use them to inspire a new video. And, and unlike other platforms, we revenue share with stories. Right. So creators can actually earn money by sharing what they're up to. Oh, so that was the other audience. question. Well, but, but, but just go back to the others for a sec. I'm going to ask you to comment on the others in addition to your own. So, no, what do you, like, when do you think TikTok is actually, if, if you were an influencer, you're an, I'm making you an influencer for the day. You are an influencer already in your own way, but when would you say, okay, if I was going to build, I'm going to build my audience on TikTok, or I'm going to build an audience on IG, and by the way, I'm also going to have a YouTube channel, and I'm going to have sponsors on my, you know, on my videos myself, because I'm gonna have my own sponsor relationships, and then I'm gonna try to get a chunk of revenue if I can, but probably not a lot, from the actual social media companies themselves. Like, how do you think about that? There's the, and, and by the way, that we have folks in here who actually are advisors to influencers, like people who have professionalized doing this. They're not just doing it by themselves. Well, I think what you're pointing out is that platforms play really different roles in creators' lives because they help people reach different audiences. So Snapchat, for example, we, we reach more than 75% of 13 to 34-year-olds here in the U.S. and in 24 other countries or more uh, around the world. And so I think when folks are looking at connecting with the next generation of fans, that's why they really come to Snapchat. And they use stories to build a more predictable relationship with their followers and to earn revenue. And then they use Spotlight, which is our short right. video platform, to try to get more distribution by you know, posting videos and, and using that really to help introduce right. their videos to a wider group of people. I'm not going to get you, it sounds like, to talk about the other sites, but I'm going to ask you this, this way then. How do you feel about folks who build um, video for the other sites first, right? And you see the little TikTok logo in the corner on a snap. So in Spotlight, for example, uh, we try to... <laughs> help me. No, I'm just, do, you, do you see the little TikTok thing and go, oh my goodness, this is terrible? Or do you say, okay, this is how people should do it. It's actually, it's more efficient for them to start there and then go here and I understand or people should start with Snap and then I want them to port their stuff over to the other sites because that actually is going to help them build a, a bigger audience. Do you know what I mean? Did you try to get the players today to talk about the other teams? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> with some success. I, I think you know what's what's really you know continues to be unique about Snapchat is that people can build a, an engaged relationship with their fans right. and that they can monetize that relationship and earn money by expressing themselves. And I think one of the things, in addition to the relationships that creators really value from Snapchat, is that authenticity. So when you think about the founding of Snapchat about 13 years ago now, we were very focused on creating a platform where people could express the full range of human right. emotion. There weren't public likes and comments, so you didn't feel the pressure to be pretty and perfect. And I think that sort of communication between friends has translated into our content platform as well, where people feel comfortable sharing a more behind the scenes or unvarnished and authentic side of themselves, which really you know, reduces the, the work people feel like they have to do to create content.